Welcome everyone, this is Viking, and today we're going to talk about countermeasures and auto-rotation in the KA-50. Now, I'm playing back a track here, so I might get the narration a little bit off um, in terms of the overall timing, but uh, basically what's going on here is we've got a man pad located down here, and we're going to fly through the edge of its weapon engagement zone in order to provoke an attack, and then we're going to use countermeasures to uh, defeat that IR guided missile. Now, if you got if you're facing a radar guided missile, you, you're not carrying any chaff, so you can't use countermeasures to defeat that. If you if you're facing a radar guided missile, all you can really do is try and get down low or behind cover. I mean, if you can put a building or even a tree between you and the missile, then that'll destroy the missile and and you will have defended. But odds are a radar guided missile is going to be coming at you from above, like from a jet. Um, certainly there are radar guided SAMs, and if you're nice and low to the ground, you've got a pretty good chance of defeating those. But um, really, you're, you're, um, the, the, the best hope you've got for radar guided missiles is getting as low as you can so that uh, ground radar returns mess it up, um, so that you get lost in the, in the background clutter. Even if it kind of manages to track you, often you seem like a bigger blob than, uh, than a single pinpoint, and so um, it, it it may hit near you, but uh, but will be less likely to actually impact you directly. Um, but uh, but you're not carrying any countermeasures that can affect radar guided missiles. So countermeasures that you've got can only affect um, uh, infrared guided missiles, and that's what we're facing down there in that uh, in that man pad. We've got a guy down here with a shoulder launched surface to air missile, an SA-18 IGLA. And fortunately, those things stand a decent chance of being fooled by flares. Now, we're going to program in 519 as our countermeasures program. Now, these three buttons determine the countermeasures program. Um, 5 is a special code, it means 12. 7 is a special code, it means 15. And over here, 7 is a special code, it means uh, 0.25 seconds, quarter second. And 9 is a special code, means half second. So 519 means that 12 flares come out of each side because I've got, uh, uh, I've got both these lights lit up here. That means that the, uh, the program runs for each flare dispenser, and there's one on either side of the aircraft. Um, and so we're going to get 12 flares coming out of each side for a total of 24, and that, uh, there I am selecting the, uh, the different sides. Um, so you can have it just come out the right side, just come out the left side, but honestly, if I'm in a position where I need countermeasures, I don't want to be thinking about which side is the best side and then flipping switches for it. So I just put both of them on. Um, and then because this is a nine, the flares are going to come out every half second. If I want, I can hit this button to make that happen three times. But I, I, if I want to make it happen multiple times, I can just hit the button again. So I usually set five, one, nine. So that's uh, 12 flares out of each side every half second. Takes six seconds to run the program. 24 flares get dispensed. That's a that's a pretty good quantity of flares. You've got 128 of them, so you can do that like five and a half times, um, and that's good enough for most situations. If you're uh, if you're fighting off more than five missiles, there's a pretty good chance that one of them is going to see through the countermeasures and hit you anyway. So I say you know you might as well just use what you've got while you're still alive to use it. There's uh, there's not much point in dying with flares to spare. Now, very shortly we're going to get going. We're going to clip the edge of the zone, and because this is a track replay, I happen to know that he's not going to shoot at us on our first pass through. Um, but we're going to we're going to look for him and see if we can spot the guy. Once we do get hit, we're, we're going to take some serious engine damage, and at the time I thought that he got both of our engines, because we get hit twice. Um, and so I attempted to perform an auto-rotation. As it happens, I had power in one of my engines, so it wasn't really a proper auto-rotation, but it demonstrated the principles. Um, basically, this is your rotor RPM down here. You got your engine RPMs here. If uh, if the one and two needle are lined up so you can't even see the two needle because the, the one needle is higher, um, then both your engines are healthy, that's cool, the RPMs are high, but uh, when you're descending uh, in auto rotation, you want to make sure that the rotor RPMs stay between the two red lines. 
as long as they do that, then you'll have enough momentum in your rotor blades that A, you can control it on the way down, and B, you'll have some, uh, some energy in your rotors to spend for when you need to flare before touchdown. Now, the idea is to, uh, to descend, basically as soon as you lose your, uh, your, both your engines, you immediately zero the collective. You just put it all the way back down to nothing and you let yourself fall. Um, you want to maintain a forward speed of approximately 100 kilometers per hour um, so that you don't generate a vortex ring state. And then as you get closer to the ground, you pull back a little bit uh, on the cyclic and you that, that helps arrest your forward momentum. You do have wheels, um, assuming they're not destroyed, uh, so you can afford to roll a little bit when you land, but ideally you just want to touch straight down with no side-to-side -side or forward uh, movement. So when you get really close to the ground, um, you, uh, you do that flare, that somewhat arrests your rate of descent and it also uh, helps to arrest your forward momentum. And then you gently push the collective all the way up to maximum, and that increases the, uh, the blade pitch, and you spend the energy that's in your rotors to, uh, to take away the last of your downward momentum, and then hopefully you just plunk gently down on your landing gear. It takes a bit of practice to, uh, to do it well, but uh, it's worth knowing how to do it. It's not super necessary in the Black Shark, um, because we have an ejection seat, but most helicopters do not have that, and if you're into helos, it's good to know how to do auto rotation. Now, Right out there is that pesky little man pad. He's hard to see, but he's right there. Now, because we've basically passed right by him and he hasn't taken a shot at us, we're going to come in closer and try to provoke that attack. And then as soon as we see the missile launch, we're going to dump a ton of flares. I'm going to go to an external view for this the beauty of having a track file replay. We're looking like right at the top of the rotor mast, that's where he is, and so we're watching for a smoke trail, and when we see it, we're immediately going to dump flares. and it goes for the flares. And will we get to see it pop in the distance? I guess not. All right, well, we head nice and low, and I thought that, uh, that this guy was going to take a while to reload, and because I'm moving nice and quickly, that, uh, that he wouldn't have a chance to shoot at me again before I turned around. Um, however, this guy is fast with the reload, man. Boy, is he ever fast. And I figured, okay, well, he, there's, there's no way this guy's going to get a third shot off. It's like, no, no, no way that's going to happen. So I figured I could, I could just sort of, you know, cruise here. But, oh my goodness, look at that smoke trail. Oh. And things are on fire. Not good. Now, I hit the fire extinguisher button. Um, inside the cockpit, that's over here. You can see that there's a fire in the engine. You hit that extinguisher button. Uh, I did hit it. It doesn't seem to have done a whole lot of good. And this is where I try to do the auto rotation. Okay, fire went out. That's good. Now, it turns out we actually do have some engine power over here. Actually, our, our right engine is more or less fine. But I'm trying to keep the rotor RPMs in between those two red lines, and then I spend the collective here. Ugh. And I'm able to set it down. I think our right engine is not completely healthy uh, in this case, 
uh, but the left engine is uh, is completely gone. And because I still had some engine power uh, coming from the right-hand side, this wasn't really an auto-rotation. Um, probably that would have been a slightly rockier landing if, uh, if I hadn't had that engine power. But even as I was uh, applying collective, you could see how the rotor RPMs dipped way down into the 7 section. And, uh, and that means I didn't actually have enough power to, to actually maintain flight. So it's still good that I performed the auto rotation routine. That uh, that definitely saved my aircraft, but it wasn't as difficult as it would have been if um, uh, if I had had no engine on the right hand side at all. I'm not seeing any visible damage, but it sh the the rotor RPMs should not have dropped that far if there was nothing wrong with it. If I if I had sufficient power to carry on with flight, so. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, countermeasures and auto rotation in the Black Shark. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.